What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out how Dolph Ziggler almost became a main eventer by Superkick Studios. Yeah, this one's this is a that's a tough one. This is a sad situation, man. Dolph Ziggler at one point was supposed to be the next guy up. People, the fans were behind him, wanting him to succeed. Him cashing in uh the night after wrestlemania to become the world heavyweight champion only for that title reign to cut be cut short i believe due to injury or whatnot um it just sucks and then after that they didn't really do much with him he had a uh pretty cool uh intercontinental championship feud with the miz for a little bit and then after that he became the it should have been me guy and then that's it it's crazy just crazy so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support man let's get right into this one Dolph Ziggler has been in the WWE we gotta oh no I gotta go from the beginning I just 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 we was just talking about this look at this look at this oh my god I from time to time I go back and watch this clip because it was just lightning in a bottle i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it bro him winning that was such a beautiful moment oh so good i've seen Dolph do great things in the past this was his great oh yeah that i forgot about that him being the sole survivor in the wwe versus uh, the authority survivor series match and how over he was in that match and being able to get the win in that match and they didn't do nothing with it they it's like he was able to get over he was so over like the fans were ready for the wwe to really do something with him after this and they did nothing i was like oh god this is what i love but you know what sometimes yep. things you love don't always love you back So many good moments, so many missed opportunities. Ah. Dolph Ziggler has been in the WWE for nearly 20 years, and in that yes. time frame, he's been somewhat of a utility knife for the company, slotting in wherever they need him to. However, his career is defined by one word, and that's almost. Seems like every time he would do something of note, every time he was in a big storyline, or any time he was yep. ready to make that next step into the upper echelon of WWE superstars, his momentum would be pulled from underneath him or the company would hesitate to do anything of substance with him. I think a majority of wrestling fans would agree that Dolph Ziggler is one of those guys who's always showed up and put his best foot forward. Mm -hmm. He's one of the greatest sellers in the company's history and as time has wore on, he's developed an ability on the mic that allows for his passion for pro wrestling to come to the forefront. He loves this, but as you'll see in this video, this hasn't always loved him back. Ziggler was signed to WWE Developmental in 2004 after the company saw him wrestle in college. He had been into wrestling since a very young age. In high school, he set the record for most pins held, and when he got to Kent State University, the record for most career wins. Damn. Went to OVW for a bit and then made his debut in September of 2005 as Chavo Guerrero's personal caddy. Guerrero mm -hmm. was going under the character of Kerwin White. Unfortunately, <laughs> though, Eddie Guerrero passed away that same yeah. year and the character was dropped. Dolph Ziggler being part of the act was also scrapped and sent back to OVW, but he'd make his way back pretty quick. In 2006, he re-debuted as part of the Spirit Squad yeah. where he went under the name of Nikki. The Spirit Squad was a group of male cheerleaders designed for comic relief. They were jobbers and very much so treated like that on WWE TV. Though the group did get main event exposure when they shared the ring with DX, but it was over before we knew it and mm -hmm. Ziggler was right back where he started in developmental. As time passed, and OVW turned into FCW, he refined everything about himself and made his re-re-debut in 2008 as Dolph Ziggler, a bleach blonde, overconfident, cocky, yet charismatic stud who could also back things up in the ring. Early on, he was in mid-card rivalries that weren't anything of note, but he did get TV time on a consistent basis, so it wouldn't be far-fetched to say that management did have plans for him. Mm -hmm. The same management that through the years 
would turn things messy for him, let's just say. In his early days, we got signs of something that would plague him throughout his career, and that's stop and start pushes. Yeah. He feuded with Rey Mysterio and John Morrison, failing to win the Intercontinental Championship, but a turning point came for him in 2010 when he was paired up with Vicky Guerrero, yep. who was his on-screen girlfriend. He won the Intercontinental Championship and continued to feud with Kofi for a majority of the year. In early 2011, he was in a rivalry with Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship, where even though he lost the match at the Royal Rumble, he was awarded the world title when edge was dq'd for using the spear so at this point you could see that there was clearly something that the company saw in him mm -hmm. otherwise why would they put his name in the history books even if it was just for a brief time he lost the title the same night back to edge a step in the right direction for sure but the feud with him didn't really go anywhere after that. Ziggler and Vicky on screen were moved to Raw after it had come out that Vicky and Dolph attacked Teddy Long. Keep in mind, we were only four-ish years into his main roster run by this point. When he went to Raw, he won the US title, held it for 182 days in a reign which wasn't anything memorable. He dropped it to Zack Ryder at the end of 2011 before moving into a rivalry with CM Punk. Uh, I forgot that he held the title that long. <laughs> Punk was in the early days of his 434-day championship reign. Ziggler Ziggler did pin him once during the rivalry, but he didn't go on to win the big one. However, fast forward to July of 2012, and Ziggler became Mr. Money in the Bank, earning himself a shot at the World Heavyweight mm -hmm. Championship anytime he wanted. And there it was, the golden opportunity, the chance to propel him into that next level, win a world title, have a reign with it, and then see where he goes from there. During his time as Mr. Money in the Bank, he feuded with Chris Jericho, basically telling him that he lost his touch, had a rivalry with Randy Orton and John Cena, who, as you guys know, are two of the biggest stars in the yeah. company's history. So, as you can see, he was allowed to mix things up with the top stars in the company. He was right there with them, and by virtue of that, had more exposure. Feuding with John Cena during this time, of course, you're not going to end up winning that. No. He did beat him at <laughs> TLC where his money in the bank was on the line. On screen, he moved away from Vicky Guerrero and instead had AJ as his love interest. WWE even gave him Big E as a heavy. So it looked like they were positioning him for success and success after the cash-in as well. That brought us to the Raw after WrestleMania 29. Uh, Ziggler cashed in the Money in the Bank in one of the most popular cash-ins ever. Facts. The crowd was electric because, of course, it's the Raw after Mania. Cashed in on Del Rio, uh, and there he was, the brand so new good. World Heavyweight Champion. But as quickly as that moment came, he <sighs> suffered a huge roadblock, a concussion that put him out of action for about a month. Ziggler got kicked in the head by Jack Swagger Jeez. when he was going to pick up a ladder, resulting in him losing memory for two days. He came back after a month. Jesus, I didn't even I, I, I didn't know it was like memory for two days. That's we gotta go watch that again, bro. That this is how crazy, how dangerous wrestling can be. Look at this Not again. Out of action for about a month. Ziggler got kicked oh. in the head by Jack Swagger when he was going to pick up a ladder result. Losing memory for two days? Damn, that's rough. And him losing memory for two days. He came back after a month, and even though the audience was still on his side, Upper Brass didn't seem to agree. After nope. returning to action, Ziggler lost the title in his first defense to Alberto Del Rio. Which sucks, bro. It's like that injury derailed him, and they didn't feel comfortable pushing him. Even though it wasn't his fault, you know, dude got kicked in the fucking skull, which you expect, but damn, man. That's, and that's he tough. never won a world title again. That's it. That payback 2013, they even did a double turn with Ziggler turning face, and this didn't really go anywhere. The rest of the year on screen, he lost his girl, he lost his heavy, and sadly, he lost his push, relegated right back to the mid-card. WWE didn't even give the guy a chance. They saw that he was injury prone and they didn't even give him a successful pay-per-view defense to see if he could actually make some noise. They put an end to yep. things before they could even start and let's not act like the World Heavyweight Championship scene was anything special at the time. Ziggler could have for sure held it. For Anyways, sure. he spent the rest of the year in the mid-card failing to win the US and Intercontinental Championship. Come year's end, forget main event matches, he wasn't even on the main card. He was losing to Fandango on the pre-show mm -hmm. of TLC where one year previous at that same event, he was wrestling the company's golden boy, continually falling down the pecking order, not a priority to the company by any means, and it looked like it was all but over. However, a moment presented itself. Opportunity came knocking, and it came at the end of 2014 when Ziggler was part of Team Cena at Survivor Series. See, mm -hmm. the company had been running a storyline where John Cena and anyone... Yeah, I had said Team WWE, but I mean, basically... 
team at the beginning of the video. Team Cena is Team WWE versus the Authority. So, dare to align with them would get unfairly treated by the bosses. Cena assembled his team to take down the Authority, and it was Ziggler who didn't play much of a role going into the match. But when we got to Survivor Series, it became the breakout performance of a yeah. lifetime for him. He was Everyone so over was in that match for Team Cena, except for Dolph Ziggler, who overcame a three-on-one deficit in a star-making performance. From his selling to his ability to make you buy into the match, he had proven so that good. He fans invested with his work. Even though the large talking point on that night was Sting's WWE debut, Ziggler mm -hmm. had risen up once again. Now that was actually supposed to be Roman Reigns in Ziggler's spot, but he was injured. Dolph was obviously primed to do something and be a key player in the mm -hmm. authority story moving forward. But the story they instead told was Triple H and Stephanie coming back into power yeah. and the company kayfabe firing him. And yeah. Yeah, that's literally that's it. about it. No that's really it. And I didn't even know Roman Reigns was supposed to be in that spot, technically. I'm glad he wasn't because Dolph deserved that moment, but. They didn't do nothing with it. They did. And I was just like, all right, well, what's the fucking point? Punch, no big pay per view. I guess it makes sense because Dolph wasn't supposed to technically be the guy to do it. It was supposed to be Roman, I guess. I don't fucking know from what he's saying. So, and that does sound kind of believable too. An event spot. He did win the Intercontinental Championship though and hold it for a small amount of time. But headed into WrestleMania 31, he was just another guy again. It's pretty unbelievable that they had it right there. And they did nothing with the guy. It's also important to remember that this is a point in WWE's history where the company was fixated with pushing Roman Reigns and nothing else mattered. Uh -huh. Maybe Ziggler's big performance and his return at the same time is what caused that. I don't exactly know. Throughout 2015, Ziggler was toiling around in random matches, eventually getting involved in a feud with Rusev and Summer Rae in the summer, which wasn't very good what mm -hmm. ended up happening was wwe got pissed that lana and rusev who had actually been dating in real life revealed that they were engaged mm -hmm. so the storyline ended up being dropped earlier in the year he was in a kiss me arse match against sheamus i swear this guy actually might be the most unlucky wwe wrestler ever anytime things looked up for the guy nothing yeah From here he quite literally did nothing until 2016 when the brand split happened Ziggler was quickly given an opportunity to be in a prominent storyline when he became the number one contender to the WWE Championship. This wasn't some hot storyline with a ton of fan investment, but a fresh mm -hmm. challenger. Someone fans wanted to see in that position. No one really thought that he was going to win, but as always, he did his best to make people buy in. He lost at SummerSlam, and this loss was used in storyline where Miz targeted Ziggler for always coming up short. The mm -hmm. two had an Intercontinental Championship match at Backlash 2016, which Ziggler lost after interference from Maurice. Dolph wanted another title shot, but Miz refused, which led to Ziggler cutting a very passionate promo yeah. in which he put his career on the line. The storytelling and drama this of that match good. being its key strength. The two doing a really good job at building the tension and engaging the crowd. This a was crowd so good. that was fully behind Dolph Ziggler. He won that night, and for what, the third time? It seemed like there was another resurrection yep. in Dolph Ziggler's career. <laughs> Can you guess what happened? Yep. Yep. <laughs> literally nothing. nothing he had proved that maybe he wasn't damaged goods he dropped it back to the miz on smackdown after just 37 days the company didn't give him a prolonged run they didn't use it to propel him into a different role they didn't let him run with it and showcase his in-ring talent he's gone on record to say that he actually wanted to lose the match at backlash so he could take some time away however as the title suggests almost in an alternate universe he goes on a seth rollins like ic championship run but that didn't happen for him at this oh. point multiple opportunities to have him be something more the thing with him was that the fan support was always there his heart was always in it and he could play whatever role you needed him to like the next year when he started to blame the fans for not respecting him as much as he deserved so his reaction to that was okay let me give them what they want and he'd come out impersonating other wwe yeah, wrestlers from john that. cena to the undertaker and Shawn michaels the impersonations weren't received well with many calling them some of the worst segments of the year don't think i'm telling you any tales by letting you know how much his career had stagnated up yeah. until this point lost confused a star that could have been in that same year, he won the U.S. Championship at Clash of Champions, and then the following SmackDown vacated it, telling the crowd that here is something to remember me by. Teasing yeah, I was so confused. I was like, what the fuck? You won it. Then <laughs> he vacated it. I was like, what are they doing with him? What they, what they about to do with him? What? <laughs> I was like, what? 
from the WWE. This was done to try to reboot his character, but it didn't. He returned at Royal Rumble 2018, and there was a lot of talk that he might actually win it. If they wanted to repackage him, they should have done something different when he came back. He yeah. had the same entrance, the same ring gear. Yeah. It was just the same Dolph Ziggler. In 2018, though, he did have high points, however. With Brock Lesnar in retreat with the Universal Championship, Raw needed something to carry it, and that was Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. When Drew McIntyre arrived on the scene, the two became a focal point on Raw. Mm -hmm. It was that Shawn Michaels and Diesel dynamic. Eventually, after winning the tag titles, they had a rivalry, which surprisingly had no big blow-off, no big pay-per-view match. So you look at things and you go, okay, maybe something happens once, coincidence. Maybe twice, okay, unlucky. Three times, okay maybe they had other plans a tag team and a big tag team to have a breakup and you're not even gonna run it on a b or c level show seems kind of suspect and honestly it seems really unlucky yeah if you do with kofi in 2019 for the wwe championship uh -huh. you know the, it should have been me promo yeah after that he <laughs> yeah. Really fucking love that it should have been me we <laughs> done anything of note he's been the guy that wwe throws in when they need a safe hand whether it's a thrown together tag team or random mid card matches he seems like their guy to do just that. He's also received a co-sign from The Rock, who at one point responded to an Instagram post that WWE put up. It showed Dolph Ziggler with the WWE title, and he said, quote, I'd co-sign this decision 100. Talented dude and always has had a spark in his presentation. He won the NXT Championship in 2022, which is so random, but... Uh, they, man, they, they dropped the ball with him so many times, bro. I don't know why. I would have co-signed it a while back for him to be WWE champion champion I would have not now no but back then for sure a few years ago hell yeah they haven't done shit with him they don't want to do anything with him I guess it makes sense with his career it's a story of what if and normally these are based on that was a random their situation guys too. guys who fail to find that same magic again or people who get injured but not in this case. In this case, the company had multiple opportunities to push him. They never gave the guy any consistency. And on multiple occasions, he rebuilt himself. The earmarkings for success were there from a young age. The cash in felt like he had the wrestling world at his fingertips. But right when he got on the cusp of something, WWE refused to allocate the time and effort into making him into something bigger. You can never say never because you don't know when someone will get hot and all of a sudden factor into the plans because we've seen that again True. and again. I think a lot of you guys have watched enough wrestling that you just don't know when someone will become a fan favorite and they'll want to push that guy. However, in Ziggler's case, it's all about what you do with them afterwards. Yeah. And in his case, the misses have been injury. The misses have been WWE just not trusting him. And it's so strange. He's had a successful career, yes, the dude's won a ton of titles, he's had his fair share of strong matches, and I genuinely believe he has the respect of a majority of wrestling fans, just a constant workhorse who does whatever is asked of him, but in retrospect, you look at all the chances to make him into something, and they didn't. But you guys let me know, what went wrong for the guy? Do you think the guy should have been someone on the posters and on the marquee for the WWE? Was WWE right not to pull the trigger on him? Or was this just a bad judgment call by the company on multiple occasions? It's safe to say that Dolph Ziggler's career has been a roller coaster for sure, but I want to hear from you guys. Should he have been something more? And does he still have enough time to be something more? As always, do take very good care of yourself. Peace. And here's the thing. Like he said, you never know what will happen. You never, you know, can't predict the future. I don't think a lot of us predicted Kofi Kingston and Kofi Mania being a thing and him becoming the WWE champion. I can tell you this now. After his his feud with Randy Orton and how that played out many years ago, and he was just dropped down to the mid card after that, I just knew Kofi would never be WWE champion. And I didn't even have that expectation for him to be WWE champion. And then when it happened, it was just a surreal moment. So I'm not saying this can't happen. I'm not saying that, you know, Dolph Ziggler maybe one day can actually reach that mountaintop. It would just have to be certain circumstances have to align perfectly. The only problem is it's, it's different with Kofi because they didn't give him like main event pushes he kind of stayed in the mid card and then it just happened to be at the right place at the right time here they've given him multiple pushes and then 
they don't push him no more. He it just they they stop the push and then they push him again and they stop the push and then they push him again. So this is one of those things where it could happen, but will the fans care? Uh, that I don't know. So yeah, man, comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys think Dolph Ziggler is world champion material? Do you feel like he deserves? Well, should have been a, w, uh, a WWE champion at least once. Do you feel like he should have had a longer World Heavyweight Championship reign? Um, do you guys feel that way? Or do you guys feel like where he is right now is, you know, a perfect spot for him? Let me know down below. Uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys on, on the channel. Road to 150K. Still again, speed to YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.